Welcome to episode 82 of Let's Talk Geek, recorded on 22 February 2012. In the show, 10 reasons why, or perhaps why not, to switch to Linux. Details around the Galaxy S3 emerge in South Africa, no less. And e-tolling is set to start on the 30th of April, 2012. Thank you for listening. Welcome to episode 82 of Let's Talk Geek. I'm Jan. And I'm Tim. And uh, this is the show. Indeed. All right. Into our first topic, uh, why switch to Linux? But before we do that, let me just give a shout out to Quentin and happy birthday. Happy birthday, Quentin. Almost forgot. Yes. Okay. <laughs> From that, and since I know he's a big Linux geek, why switch to Linux? Yes. So um, this was apparently in uh, the UK PC mag. And... Uh, it says top 10 reasons to give Linux a try in the show notes, but the, it's quite clearly titled Why Switch to Linux. Um, so number one, Linux is free. Cool. And so that is cool. And I've heard the counterpoint uh, that Linux is only free for people who don't value their time, which I thought was cute. Oh, I, I disagree with that. <laughs> I spend far more time on Windows trying to get... Things to work. And, and I must say, um, for, all the, I mean, for all the bad things one can say about Mac, when I opened my Mac laptop for the first time, um, compared to, say, launching a Dell or an HP or even a <coughs> Lenovo. Yeah, yeah. Price. We're talking about price. <coughs> That's price. a different show. Um, but, uh, like, I don't have to get rid of all the crapware. I mean, that's, that in itself is like an hour exercise just to uninstall all the junk you don't need. Um, uh, or perhaps even going, okay, I'm not even going to try doing that. I'm just formatting this thing and doing it my way, which mm. I've also done. Yeah. Look, Macs are nice PCs. Um, and I've learned this day, apparently, they follow the Emacs bindings. So if, you're using, if you know Emacs, using any of the, you know, if you in the Word editor or any editor where you're editing text, you can use all the Emacs bindings. Oh, key bindings. Cute. By the way. Yeah. Um, I don't know Emacs, so I just use <laughs> the stuff that I pick up along the way. Um, Linux is fast, number two. True. Yeah, it depends. Fastest boot. Yes. I mean, Ubuntu is definitely the fastest boot I've ever had. I must had. say, with the new Unity, I found apps starting to be painfully slow, but I've, okay, hacked it and replaced the GUI, and now it's, it's still it's f way quicker than Windows. Look, I don't know about Mac, so I can't compare to Mac, but yeah, I can yeah. compare to Windows. Number three, Linux has thousands of apps, all right? Which, I mean, yes, but you can also put that against any other platform and go, they have more. They have premium apps. Uh, a lot of the, what's cool about the, the, uh, a lot of the Linux apps is that you can get really advanced stuff for no money at all. Um, yes. It's completely free. Look, there, there's certain things that Linux can do that... Um, other PCs, well, okay, the Mac can, it's based on a BSD kernel, but like Windows can't. So like I know there's some uh, networking things I do, or especially for work and stuff like that, you just can't do that with. Yes. There's no ways. Yes, yes. Um, um, and, and I must say Linux has some fairly cool free apps. If you look at GIMP, GIMP is an incredibly powerful image editor. Um, for for those who you know just spend a little bit of time online, um, and the, the the Photoshop fans would be the first ones to rage at me and go, no, no, Photoshop. I'm like, yes. How much do you pay for Photoshop? And yes, I know nothing because you all pirate it, but GIMP is absolutely free and it has an amazing feature set for a free app. My one answer to that though is all those apps, you, the, if they're good enough, you can get on Windows. You yes, know, GIMP, 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 you can get. That's true. Inkscape is another one I use a lot in Linux. Yeah, available uh, on Windows. Open Office. Um, look, I must now say, I no longer run any... I, I have a version of Word um, with Crossover, literally just so when people email me documents, I can open them. But I haven't opened Word in about... Since last year, yes. August sometime. I'm a journalist and I don't write in Word. Yeah. I mean, I, I, but that's basically because of my the platform. I actually have Mac uh, Office for Mac, but I prefer to write in Markdown. Um, and so what's cool about Mac is that it's got a built-in, um, now we're talking about moving from Mac to, to Linux to Mac, but it's got built-in word processing functions basically in anything. So you don't have to have your own dictionary and stuff. You can actually rely on the operating system to give that stuff for you. Now, similarly, on Linux, you need a dictionary. That's cool. Install a spell. And yeah. then you can have your, pl your app plug straight into that library, which is available on you know, most distros. So well, Also, it's like somebody else in the IRC said, I'm trying to see it was, uh, CZC, um, they, they've switched over to Google Docs. Um, also, things are going more online uh, and web-based. It doesn't matter what operating system you're running. Yeah. And, and then, admittedly, if you're wanting a, a stripped-down operating system with just a browser, 
Go, go Linux. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Linux is secure um, as long say. as you don't wait, run wait, as wait. the root user. Since we're talking about uh, how are the games in Linux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Linux games. <coughs> it's got... Uh, the indies are really supporting Linux well, and, and it really works well for them commercially to do so because the buzz you generate, mm. even though the, the Linux as a market is almost negligible, but the, the PR buzz, the free PR buzz that you can generate from supporting Linux is incredible. Yes. Um, and so you'll see guys like uh, Wolf Fire with Overgrowth and uh, World of Goo. Um, I don't remember the name of the studio, 2D Boy. Um, Osmosis. Osmos, um, and all the stuff that come through the Humble Indie Bundle, all that stuff runs on all three platforms, uh, all three big platforms, um, um, Windows, Linux, Mac. Um, so, yeah, I'm, so you can get, if you, there, there are very few hardcore titles that run on, on uh, Linux, and the ones that, that do so supposedly support it, like, for example, um, S... Two S three S two, um, they uh, right. They made a game called Heroes of New Earth, which is a, for the guys who play Dota. It's a lot like Dota. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and uh, that just does not run well on anything but Windows. To be to be fair, so right. it does not run well on Mac. Though it supports it, does not want to run well on Linux, even though it says it supports it. So yeah, gaming support on Linux, not quite there. Yet. No. Anyway, let, let's move on to to speed up a bit. Yes. Uh, Linux is secure. Yep, which is, uh, I think, a That's fair true. comment. Just yep. don't run as root. Linux is reliable, um, except when you add the X server and Unity. <laughs> uh, but, but it all, always depends. You can set it up. I've got a, a friend of a friend who complains when he needs to reboot his PC, which he does every year and a half or so. Uh, Linux PC. Or, yes. Or, yeah. Look, admittedly, this guy's a hardcore, hardcore <laughs> geek. You know, has written his own kernel modules, et cetera, et cetera. Very bright guy. But, you know, I have servers that are, have been running for a year. With, uh, and literally, you can see uptime a year, still working fine, still no problems. Generally, when you need to do very, very, like, major kernel revisions and do a reboot. Yes. And that just keep on running. Yep. And, and can you, you are, say you that for a single Windows PC? Yeah, but those Linux machines, you are not running an X server and you are not uh, running Unity. Um, True. And the, uh, like I've had X seg fault on me for those who don't know what that means. Uh, that means that it is trying to address memory that has not been allocated to it. So X, stop it. Um, like literally, it just my, my whole desktop, everything I was working on, be in the middle of a document. Boom, and it restarts. Like at least it fails semi gracefully by restarting the X server, and then I get put back. I, I on must my say I don't have that login happen that often. That that's happened to me on Ubuntu, on an, on a to be specific on a Lenovo X three hundred laptop. Yeah. Look, I'm, I must say Ubuntu been pushing. If you go back like to ten oh four, I think you have this ability again. Yeah, Just, that, that's where I had my issues. New was eleven on. branch. It was it was ten oh it was from the ten ten. Yeah. thing that I had just issues galore anyway Linux works on any PC also dis yeah. it's debatable it, look it, it works on a lot of PCs and if you run PC. it like you were describing if you're running a, a command line only version absolutely yes. you can run it on basically anything yeah. um, however um, but this is a good and a bad thing that it doesn't run on your phone if you're running an phone. Android phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is, but it's not, I mean, uh, while we are disputing the point, it's not a bad thing because Linux is right up there with any other modern operating system. So just because you need a modern graphics card to run a modern desktop environment doesn't make it bad. No. Um, I mean, it has to keep up with the times. And up until very recently, Linux has been, and Linux distributions have been pushing the envelope in terms of UI um, a lot. And, and uh, the, the uh, other guys started I, catching up. I think up. a lot of them, they're copying the Mac. They, they, they copied copy a lot of stuff Mac. off Mac, um, especially in, in GNOME. Um, but some of the other guys have done some really interesting things in user interface and user interface design um, that you did not see on other platforms. And, um, for example, uh, the, the GNOME, it might not even be just GNOME, but um, it got a, it got a uh, comp composition desktop thingy that lets you view your desktops on a cube. And oh, then yes. you would switch your desktops. Yes, okay, and now while that if, um, you know, <laughs> viewing everything as a cube is just cutesy, where it is, you know, kind of cool is to have the transition on the face of a cube. I was actually using it for quite a while. And oddly, it actually does work. Yeah. Um, and I, I was always wondering if it actually uses, because your, your memory actually is quite very good at memorizing things positionally. 
And because it now sees as a 3D cube, it actually, you remember what's in what yes. face and actually worked quite nicely. Yeah, no, it was quite, quite cool. All right, Linux gives you choice, number seven. So does every other operating system. So. Um, yes and no. Um, I think, I think it, the choice it Linux gives you gives a choice you. is you can choose it as opposed to Microsoft. Not quite. I mean, if you want to run, uh, now getting to the geek level, if you want to uh, run a different desktop environment, you are not locked into Aero or Aqua. Um, you can run KDE, GNOME, Unity. You can run KDE on Windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> if you would want to. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also to get done, done, really down and dirty, when you're setting up a mail server, you have a choice of demons. Um, you don't have to use whatever comes with it. Not that you, I mean, I'm sure you can, you can run a different mail demon than the one Microsoft chips with its server, but why you're would you? To. Uh, Linux is easy to use. It has gotten a lot easier compared to the old days. Yeah. Um, I could put my mother down fairly happily in, in front of a new, once it's installed. Um, I find, talking about easy to use, I found the Ubuntu installer one of the easiest operating system installs I've ever done yes. in my life. Yeah. So, not that non-geeks would ever do operating system installs anyway. Um, yeah. So, you can dumb it down as much as you like. Your average user is not going to install an OS. I think you can make All peace right. with that. I'm going to move us very quickly through the next two. Just mention them. Uh, Linux is growing. Linux is everywhere. Including a phone. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Taking uh, us squarely into the so Ubuntu for Android. <laughs> True. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that one. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you want to mention this one? Uh, which one? Ubuntu for Android. Yes. Because it's awesome. As in? <laughs> All right, cool. So <laughs> this, is the, uh, this is the basics. Um, it's very similar to, to Canonical's previous Pretty. announcement um, for it looks so, so cool. It looks exa it's exactly like Canonical's announcement for Ubuntu TV, uh, which is to say that nothing actually runs this yet. It seems to be, it appears to me at least to be more of an appeal to industry. They're like, please, please, please take our stuff and put it on your phones. Yes. Um, so which, look, I mean, hopefully the industry responds. because I, I, I want would, this. Yes. I would far, uh, if you look at the Motorola, Atrix and, and Canonical makes some hardcore claims on this website of theirs. That, uh, that's what I love about Canonical. They don't beat about the bush. They're like, people have tried this and it's failed. Uh, Motorola has tried it on the Atrix. And while it's cute, I will not use that as a desktop replacement. Mm, it's, mm. it's okay, um, but it's not fantastic. Having Ubuntu on my phone running next to Android. One um, problem. Yes. Storage. Yes, you're going to have to need a, a phone. I would want a phone with at least 64 gigs built in and an SD card. My SD card's fine. Now look, with, a, with SDXC support, so I can put another. Look, 64. as long as the operating system, look, as soon as you start installing app, that 64 gig is gone. Yes, that, that's why you need yeah. you need about 100. That gigs. said, I managed. This was just running Ubuntu, not Android as well, but just running Ubuntu. I managed on a 64 gigabyte SSD just fine. Where you start running out of hard drive spaces when you want to load media and stuff on there, which is what Google Music is for, just stream it. No, look, I just think I, I run about 128 gig on my desktop PC, now, but I do development, so I've got gigs and gigs of files that are actually images for our, our the, for the dev stuff we do. Um, so, or, 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 strange enough, legit stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would need at least 100. Yeah. Oh, okay, so maybe 64 with an SD card yeah. would, would be the Anyway, solution. so uh, this looks really cool, and I really hope this takes off. Um, so I don't quite know. I mean, it, it looks strange to me. Looking, looking at it as somebody who writes about the technology field, I'm looking at this thing and going, is this, is this how, you, you know, how you approach the problem? Um, you know, surely you try to build partnerships without announcing it big on a website. I, I, I don't know. I it just seems know. like such a strange way to do business. But maybe it's worked for them, and maybe it will still work for them. Um, I, I wish them all the success in the world. Yeah, I, I want it. Yeah, Samsung, HTC, if any of you are listening, I will buy whatever phone you launch I, I, I that's would, running I, I, this. I really will use it. Yeah. Um, because all of a sudden now, this heavy laptop, when I'm going to work, I just take my phone that I have. Mm. Um, or if you're just missioning around, you know, take a little bit, of, take a laptop dock type thing yeah. uh, with you and your phone. Yes. Ta -da. Ta -da. Um, love it. Cool. Right. And then the breaking news of the day, um, and there's been a lot of announcements this week from government. Um, we've had the State of the Nation address, was that the, the week before last? Um, and we've had two State of the Province addresses, one for the Western Cape and one for Gauteng. And uh, now today we've had the, the Treasury speech, the financial, the Minister of Finance getting up and going um, stuff. And so one of the things uh, spoken about was to make broadband capacity more affordable. And it's 
more politicians well, yapping no, it's, more. It's, it's not actually talking about making it more affordable. They, they said in the past year, broadband has become more affordable. Which I guess isn't untrue, but well, it's it, not nearly affordable enough. No, no, it's not. Look, admittedly, they did say it's, it's not where it needs to be, but they, they did say this needs to continue going. Um, and they did say, actually, which was quite good of them, they said most of the reason why it has become more affordable is because of private sector money. Yes. And I, I hope government continues to realize this, that, and, and maybe like they just need to open their eyes and see it, nothing they have done has improved telecommunications in this country. And, and I'm speaking boldly there, maybe I stand corrected, nothing, like not a single thing, not one initiative. Um, Centec has failed dismally. Um, any interventions they tried to do through the DOC or ICASA has failed dismally. Uh, in fact, in, in most cases, not, maybe not most, but in some cases at least, it's made it worse. Yes. Um, so they need to just really, um, what they need to do is get out of the private sector's way. This is especially with, uh, I, know, I know with Icasa, and it's still mad, you had all those hearings last year, everybody, movement. Oh, yes. oh wow, movement. Move, like, and then, really? And then deadline comes. And nothing. Nothing. No, they yes. backtrack. Yeah. So, anyway. From that into something else quite popular from the government. Uh, e totally. <laughs> yeah, that, this was quite popular, wasn't it? <laughs> so, the bottom line is that they've said that it's going gonna, it's gonna to it's gonna happen. It's going to happen from the 30th of April this year, but with significant cuts. Yeah, um, huge changes. So, the mixer has put up a nice little slide for those of you in the video. 30 cents a kilometer for light vehicles, 20 cents a kilometer for motorcycles. If you're a truck driver, uh, go get your own rates. <laughs> um, and uh, taxis and buses are free. The thing for me, which is the best, there's a cap. Of 500, I think 550 rand. That's right. Uh, a month. Um, so I look, I was looking, you know, because I have to use it. I live in Johannesburg. Every day I'm going to be driving through. I've tried the car train. It's just not feasible. It, yes. It's about two hours in one, one direction. I, I just can't do it. I've got yes. some other plans to try. But also coming to do the shows here. You know, we end Hopper State. Yes. Last trains at Hopper State. Yes. I can't catch it back. Yeah. And, and as well, you're, um, even though you're, the, the studio is in Centurion, um, it's not particularly close to the station. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if there are buses that come past here. No. Um, Look, I was thinking just as a hint, which apparently works really well, is to get a scooter, you know, maybe eight grand for the scooter. You can park it there for free. Um, and as long you as you go in the right entrance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you can go leave it overnight. And these quite guys who just leave, basically they park them there and whenever they, they, they need it, they use it. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I just want to mention before we move on to the next topic is the reason this is made possible um, is apparently because of a bailout. So government has footed a billion, a billion or so rand. I don't remember the exact figure. Let me just click through um, for, um, to, to make it cheaper. So they're basically um, subsidizing some of Sunroll's costs so that Sunroll doesn't have to recoup everything from the consumer. Which is why we pay taxes. Yes. Um, the, the whole reason for um, the, the, the e-tolling system is because the Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project needed to happen, but um, the, there wasn't tax money. There wasn't enough money, money in government yeah. coffers to make it happen. So uh, they had to... That, that's why they went with this. So... Um, yeah, so the debt of Sunroll will increase to 59 billion rand, and uh, the government has contributed once or 5.75 billion rand to Sunroll. Cool. Those are lots of billions of rand yes. of tax monies at right. work. Uh, going into something totally different, I just want to mention, see some of the guys are struggling with the streaming, and I'm assuming it's just bandwidth delays. In a week or two's time, when I just have some time, that everything's set up, I just need to do it. We're going to have, enable the uh, DVR functionality, which means that there'll be a rolling 10-minute or 30-minute window. So you can actually pause, go away, and then watch it in one continuous stream a bit later. Oh, cool. It's coming. It's there. Just, I just need time to change the front end. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, cool. All right. So OpenWeb's launched the Bonded ADSL service. I what? still find these things just because... Anyway, you tell them and then I'll give my opinion on them. Yep. For, for those of you wondering, yes, there is lightning in the background. Yes, we are scared for our lives. Not the mixer. <laughs> Except the mixer. The mixer, nothing scares Might the mixer. Might be attracting the lightning. <laughs> yes. All right. So, sorry. You were saying um, that, that you're dubious. No, look, I don't have a problem with it. bonded lines. Good idea. Everything works out. My problem is if you look at the pricing of this. It's really expensive it, cap. It's two grand. For 30 gigs. Yes, it's really expensive cap. And you're going to cruise. The whole point is, like, if you're bonding four lines, 
Uh, imagine that, four, four, just for four meg lines, never mind four ten meg lines. You're going to cruise through that cap. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I, I can't get it because in my head is, okay, you need to buy the device on this side and that side, right? After that, that's paid off. So worst case scenario, you pay that off. There is an installation fee. So let's assume the installation fee actually does nothing. Yes. And, it, you know, you must be paying that device off in two, three months. After that, it's just 30 gigs for, for, for two grand is just not worth it. No, no. Um, yeah, I mean, I, to me, it's a very difficult cost to justify. So, sorry, I'm just muting my phone here on the side or uh, at least looking at my phone. There are tweets coming in. Let's see if it's relevant to the show. Specifically, how easy this is to do. Because I actually know how... So, I don't know how they're doing it. I'm sure it's going to be two hardware devices. Um, it's, but it's actually not that technically hard to do. Yes. Our main problem on this side is just if you could do it yourself if you had a server that you could uh, bounce off of. Yes. Um, and then it's free. Well, well, the server will cost you. Let's say, okay, rent, rent server in the UK, 300 rand a month. Four, okay, make it called 600 rand a month. Give you 100 meg pipe. You want to bond eight lines? Go ahead, bond eight yeah. lines. You just need a presence in a DC, yes. and then you can do it yourself. But presence in a DC costs um, as well. So, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. Like, it would be really interesting to find out from the guys who, who provide uh, bonding solutions. I, I want to know what why drives it's so up expensive. the Because, look, these guys are one of the better prices I've seen. Th- that's, that's what surprises me. These, you know, I've seen 16 grand, 32 grand to bond lines. Why so expensive? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move us over this next topic um, because we spent a lot of time on Linux, okay. if you don't mind, unless no, you really no, wanted fine. to cover that. Uh, Galaxy Nexus. Yes, I have one. Uh, we didn't talk about it last time I was here because we also ran over time. So... Pretty. <laughs> Sorry, this is the first time I'm... Uh, get, get your hands on one. All right, so my SIM isn't in that one, so you can't make calls overseas. Um, Aww. Uh, the, so Wait. We've, got, yeah, we've got pricing and launch details for South Africa for the device. So Vodacom has let me know that they plan to launch this week still. This is the week of the... Because we didn't say it in the intro. We'll have to just say that in the intro. Um, this is the week uh, of the 22nd of February. That's the date the show was recorded. And... Um, yeah, and so it's going to launch during this week, and it's going to, on, on Vodacom, a recommended retail price of 6999 Samsung previously said the recommended retail will be between 6999 and 7299 so 7000 and 7300 Rand. I was going to ask a question about that. Yes. I can buy a, a Asus Transformer. Yes. With the SIM card. With the, you mean a 3G Asus Transformer, Quad yes. Quad-core processor, bigger screen, better graphics card, better chip for cheaper than that. Sorry, I just it doesn't make sense to yeah. me. Maybe making it smaller makes it cost more. <laughs> but they tell you the like large cost of the screen. And Samsung's the... products in South Africa I do find to be uncompetitively priced. Mm. But they're not the only ones who price their phones at oh, no, 6999. No, it's, it's, it's normal. Because yeah. look, I still remember do the I, same I, thing. I bought the Google Nexus phone originally when it first came. And with import duties and everything, it came to about five grand. You, to buy the equivalent one from any of the operators was eight grand. So there's a sudden jump of three grand that, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so yeah, it is really expensive. Um, and wh- what I wanted to say about uh, Samsung's products being expensive, for example, if you look at their tablets, it is priced, uh, the, the, the uh, Galaxy tabs um, are priced more expensively than the iPad. I don't know how you plan to compete you know, doing that. But that said, this is about the Galaxy Nexus. It is awesome. Uh, it's going to be on contract, I think, for 279 Rand a month on Which Vodacom. Not bad. And that's going to include just 100 megs of data. So there's probably some sort of business chat package. Yeah. Um, um, look, I know two call. guys in the office. As soon as that's available, they're both going out to go get it. Yeah. So another thing that's interesting is that MTN is not bringing in this device. I asked them again to confirm um, because they said, you know, they're open, they're, they might review it, blah, blah, blah. So I asked them, did you review it? Are you going to get the device? Are you at least considering getting the device? Because there's been quite a bit of a backlash, at least on the forums um, and elsewhere. Uh, you know, one other guy, at least on Google Plus and Twitter, um, complaining about the fact that MTN is not getting the device. And MTN said, it's not, we've not ranged it. Um, the reason. Yeah, and for those who want to know how ranging works, it's in an article that I, I did most recently on my broadband um, where they announced that they are bringing in the Galaxy S3. 
the Samsung Galaxy S3. And so according to MTN, they feel that the Galaxy Note and the Galaxy and the Galaxy S3 provide customers with better value or something to that effect. Um, so, so what's the Galaxy S3? The Galaxy S3 is an as yet unannounced, unconfirmed Samsung device. The rumor mill has been going strong leading up to Mobile World Congress at the end of this month um, that this device was going to be announced. Uh, Samsung have pretty much confirmed they're not announcing the Galaxy S3 at Mobile World Congress. And um, so then people were thinking that they would announce it on the 22nd of March at an event in France. They've refuted that as well. And the feeling is um, The Verge reported on uh, industry speculation saying that the reason that they are pushing back the announcement of the Galaxy uh, S3 is to prevent that lag between announcing it and making it available globally and, and launching in the U.S. months later. So they want to announce and launch in the U.S. close together. together. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that was pretty big news um, with, you know, MTN coming out and saying, oh, yeah, we are getting the Galaxy S3. I, in fact, sent them a, a response back going, please confirm you mean the S3 and not the S2. And then the rest of the networks climbed in and said, oh, yeah, we're getting it too. And we expect it in Q3 2012. Nobody else in the world has an estimate. I don't know how Samsung feels about the fact that the South African networks spoke about the device, but the fact is we, we now have an estimated date. Well, my thing now is a lot of guys are waiting for the phone. Now, as MTN, you're not going to have a phone that anybody's going to want wanting an Android. How many people are you going to lose to Vodacom? Yeah. Um, and this is a phone people want. Yes. So, so you need at least a competitor to say, don't worry, this one's as good. Yes, and, and that's what they try to do. They're trying to say, and the S3 is, by all respects, going to be better. Uh, yeah, but um, Q3. Yes, that's, that's not better. six months away. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, the, the big thing is the Galaxy Nexus has an has a extremely high-resolution screen, and um, apparently the rumor has it that the, the S3 will have, as well, a 720p screen, um, you know, like oodles of RAM, which the, the Galaxy Nexus doesn't have. So, um, yeah, but as you say, months away, is that good enough? Don't think so. Anyway. All right. <laughs> Into uh, talking about, well, Google and Microsoft. Yes, uh, this, this is a gossip columnist's dream. Uh, old uh, uh, Microsoft and Google throwing down on social networks. So whenever the one does, the, the, the one does something, the other one... Uh, you know, throws back right back right back at him on on social networks in the public eye. Yes, so uh, it's quite fantastic. Anyway, uh, anyway, uh, what did they do this time? Uh, oh, well, basically, this is Microsoft. You f you, the, the feeling you get from watching the video is that Mark's starting to feel a bit threatened that Google with the Google Docs and the rest of starting to threat their basically the Google uh, Microsoft's document and Office and all the rest of it. So the recent one basically going, look at Google Docs, you know, they kill things every now and again. How do you know, why would you put your business on Google Docs? And, you know, they killed Wave and they killed Buzz and they've killed all these things. Can you really trust them? And they change, like, they even like some of the, the bonuses, which is, you know, they're continually fixing it, uh, you know, all yes. the time. They put it as a bad thing. <laughs> going, you know, what, you guys are developing it all the time? You mean there's no stability? And it, it just, it's quite an amusing look. It's quite a clever video, I must say, just watching it. But on another side, it does skew a lot of the facts. Yes. Um, look, Office is great. It has some very cool features. Excel, you know, I know so many people who run their lives from Excel in business. Um, you know, the, the spreadsheets and stuff inside Google Docs aren't quite there. But for 99% of business, Google Docs actually does everything you need. Yes. And we run... 99% of our business off of Google Docs. Okay, yeah. And we use Google Docs um, for the show. Ever since mm. uh, Wave was shut down, we've yeah. moved everything into Docs. Um, now, now the, the reason I brought up the, the interesting battle between Microsoft and Google is because recently it was un, uh, unearthed that Google actually circumvents the privacy controls in Safari yes. to uh, make cookies talk from things like Google Plus to uh, DoubleClick. And DoubleClick no, is their ad it's, server. It's, uh, going a bit more it's not so they talk to each other um, it was that if you went to google.com your browser wouldn't accept cookies from third party sites yes on that um, and now they made a workaround that it would accept those cookies from 
add click or double yes, click or something. Yes, yes. So, um, and I mean, this means that anybody could do it though. I mean, if Google was doing it. Anyway, and so Microsoft, uh, Microsoft said, oh, oh, us too, us too. They're circumventing the privacy controls in IE as well. And so, and so Google hit back and said, um, uh, it called IE's cookie policy widely non-operational. <laughs> so the throwdown between Google and Microsoft has Must definitely been interesting. Does IE have a cookie c controls? I guess that's why Microsoft was going, ooh, ooh, us too. We have privacy controls. And so Google said, no. No. Just, just like, no. Don't. Just don't. Don't, don't, don't play with the big boys. <laughs> so at least not when it comes to the no, browser look, I'm space. A, I'm a, having said that, IE has improved so much yes. the past couple of times. It's finally starting to become a, become a real browser. Though I must say I still wouldn't use it. No, but a lot of people are fine. I'm, I mean, when I introduced um, multi-tab browsing in IE7, I know a lot of my, you know, or at least some of my friends were like, cool, that's all I wanted. I want multi-tab. Cool, I'm done. See, I want all the other cool features that I know are coming in. So it's like the all audible tags they're going to put in and the ability to work on audio. But these are all the things for which are the flash replacements that I want. Um, the final thing we just need is streaming built into the browser. Mm. Please, everybody, HTML5 people, streaming in the browser. Because <laughs> uh, there was the other thing I mentioned today. Um, Adobe is no longer going to support Flash on Linux except in Chrome. Oh, wow. So on top of not supporting it in mobile, they're not supporting it in Linux. Yeah. Flash is dead, people. Flash is dead. Yeah. All right. So um, then there's um, Autodesk has released a free 3D uh, printing software. Um, Sorry, I just have to respond to something that somebody said. I'm hoping they're joking. Is why would you possibly have more than two computers, Hawkies? I think I have seven, <laughs> including my phone. Because oh, okay. we're geeks. Yes. Wait, servers. Okay. Oh wait, including servers, I've got more. <laughs> yes, yes, and especially the servers that you're renting from anyway. Yes. 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 More PCs. How else are we going to take over the world? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, but, yes. One, two, three D app. Yes, so um, this looks quite interesting. Is Autodesk giving away really cool 3D software for free? Um, so uh, you can create a 3D model, then upload the file to their online printing service, select your materials. And, and, and most importantly, the software is free. Delivered to oh, we did say the software is free. Yes. And there are three of them. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can just go check that out. Um, I don't want to spend too much time with it because it's going to detract from our kicker. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's pretty cool, uh, I think. So 3D printing really taking off. More importantly, uh, the, the mixer who um, Shall not found be named. this yes. um, also said that the models and stuff that you, you create in this, you can also use maker bots and stuff. So it's not just locked into sending them to Adobe to make. If you have a maker bot or something similar, you can use the models created by the software in that, which to me is, it's great. Yes, yeah, no, that's good work. Well done, at Adobe. Yeah, and so, um, uh, no, this is Autodesk. So if Adobe oh, can take a lesson from Autodesk here and give me a stripped down version of Photoshop, please, that does not cost a lung to use, or to, you can even, you can even rent, or what do they call you it now? You can rent it now. Yeah, rent, what do, you, what do you call it when you rent software? It's software as a service. Um, uh, but it's not quite software as a service because you don't access it online. Mm. You just pay a monthly yeah, yeah. or an annual license fee um, for a, you know, a lot less or at least spread out uh, instead of buying this hugely expensive software package and upgrading it every year. Um, that's still not good enough. It's still not cheap enough. What I want is something really basic that can let me crop, resize. I don't need all the fancy filters. I don't, I don't need any of that. I just want cropping, resizing, um, just basic functionality. So that'd be great. Thank you. Come on, GIMP. Uh, not on Mac. Not? Mink, GIMP can work on Mac, but you have to run the X server, and running an X server on Mac is really tedious. It eats up a lot of RAM. Why would you have to run the X server? Because um, Mac uses a different windowing environment. Okay, because I know, I know in, server. in, in uh, Windows, you can run GIMP. <coughs> Excuse me, yes. Um, that's because uh, there's a natively built version of GIMP for Windows, but not for Mac. Ah, yes, fun. Indeed. I don't, um, oh, it's a GTK thing. Yes, uh, that's what I was saying. G there's a GTK for Windows, Yes, but it doesn't run natively, the seam is natively on Mac. I, I just would have assumed there would be one. Anyway, so, sorry. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're looking to that. Yeah. So I've looked into it. I can't use GIMP, not without X on Mac. Hey, you wouldn't want to install X. Mm. Uh, I don't have to install it. It's got, I can run X. Um, Mac comes with a version of X. 
you can just run X. That's how I've been using Inkscape. Mm. Um, anyway, yes. Yeah. All right, into our kicker. Yes. So Google Street View artist captures scenes from around the world for an art project. And uh, what the guy did was he, he showed, um, <laughs> no, Mickey D, I'm not a gimp. <laughs> um, sorry, that, those were comments from the IRC channel. <laughs> yeah, GIMP does have a very unfortunate name. Um, so a traffic accident, men in masks, uh, really, really weird, freaky masks, um, and a naked woman. Uh, all the split seconds that Google Street View cars have captured. Very, very interesting. And uh, I think trawling through Street View... I've tried my best to trawl through Street View in South Africa to see if I could find something interesting, and and they haven't. Uh, I've not come across anything, but people have found some some really I, interesting I say, things on know, Street View. How much time do these people have? Yeah, uh, in the in the one case in Ireland, there was there was a a guy who obviously ran out to greet the Street View car, pulled down his pants and mooned it. And in France, there was a little boy who tried to hide behind a trash can unsuccessfully. Um, so, and another very, it's actually almost a moving picture, is of an old man walking down the street. But because you, are, you, you look at Street View, you see him twice. That's how slowly he's walking. You see him twice in the same shot. Um, so, because uh, uh, that's how the, the, the Google Street View cars yeah. uh, captures the images of the, of the two scenes. So, very, very interesting. Pretty cool. Go check it out. Yep. Okay, that's a bit weird. Yeah. Hiding behind the pole. Like For those of you uh, who are uh, watching the video stream, you will uh, be seeing the pictures. I would imagine that guy's actually working on something. The guy hiding behind the pole. Yeah, oh, yeah you find maybe it's a telecoms pole or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it does look like it. And then there's another guy, I think that's in San Francisco uh, or New York. No, all those yellow cabs has to be New, New York. Uh, standing on the sidewalk with his arms up to the sky, looking all victorious. He could either be a street preacher or he could have just scored a hot date. Or greeting the sun. Or you could be saying hello to the sun. Who knows? Cool. Anyway, uh, with that, we're going to end the show. Um, go find us on Facebook. Like our Twitter account, please. Uh, and yeah, find out when the next set of shows are going to be. Yeah, yeah. We've got a Google Plus page as well. True. Um, I need to update that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, do check out our other shows uh, during the week. Almost yeah. every day of the week now. Uh, sort of. Uh, I know the next one will be Let's Talk Music on Friday. There's no, no show tomorrow. Uh, okay. The LTR guys are taking a bit of a break. Okay. Um, but I know next week, Friday, they've got Vunabom in. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah, the, the LTM guys. Yeah. Cool. Not the LTA guys, sorry. Vunabom, Afrikaans. You know, they make English music, but Vunabom. <laughs> True. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much for joining us.